Hey guys, it's Reese, and uh, today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a different video. Uh, today, instead of doing a specific uh, educational topic, uh, I'm just going to go over a general, uh, basic overview of the HP Prime and uh, all the different cool things it can do that are really, really helpful when testing. Um, so, without uh, any further ado, let's just get right into it. All right, so uh, one of the coolest things on the HP Prime is that it has an algebra solver. And if you don't know, an algebra solver is, a, on this case, um, a specific app on the HP Prime that can solve any kind of, um, or virtually any kind of algebra equation. And um, the way to get to it is, uh, sorry, you go to this apps button right here, and then you can either tap on it or you can hit enter and then boom, you're solved. Um, so now you're into the solver equation of the, uh, of the calculator. So what this is gonna allow you, you to do is, uh, let's say we have an equation uh, on our, in our question where it goes um, 3x plus five equals um, 28. So what we're going to do is we're going to type this whole equation into uh, this line right here. So all we have to do is 3 times and then this variable button, variable button right here. And in this case, our variable will be x. And there you go. There's our x. And then plus 5. And then equals, which is going to be shift and then this dot button right here, equals 28. So then we have our whole equation written into this little line right here, and we're going to hit enter, and that will put it into our calculator. So we're ready to solve this equation. Now we're going to go down to here, to this uh, number button right here, and it takes us to this uh, different panel. And we already have the answer put in right here, but just in case we're going to um, make sure that we know how to do it. So we're going to give it a guess, and I like to give it a guess of 5 most of the time because it's a positive number, it's a prime number, and it, it doesn't have any kind of weird tendencies like 1 or 2 does. So 5 is just a cool one-digit uh, guess that will work most of the time. So I give it a guess of 5, and then I hit OK, or Enter would also work, but I'll use the OK button. And so now we've got a guess in there, and then we have to hit Solve. So then there is our correct answer. So if they had given us this algebra equation, um, our answer would be 7.67, rounding to the third significant digit. So there you go. We would have gotten this question correct. Uh, sometimes the algebra question in, in question is a little bit more difficult. Um, let's say we've got a, um, and I'll give you an example of one. Let's say we have a circle, right? And it has an area of 10 and we're asked to find the radius, right? Um, I think a lot of you will probably know the formula for area of a circle, which is a equals pi r squared. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the values that we have in order to solve for r, right? So all we have to do is just type um, our area equation into our calculator and solve for r. So in this case, we'll go over to our HP Prime calculator and type 10 and then equals uh, and now pi, which will be shift 3 times r, or in this case, I'll use x. Um, but if you want to, you can also use r by going to alpha 8 and then you have r. And now hit the squared button to square our r and then get our um, equation fully, fully finished. So again, this is the same thing as this original equation. So I think we're ready to roll. We can hit the OK button and then number, give it a guess of five and solve. So then our answer would be 1.78. So on this one, we had to deal with this R squared and the algebra solver still was able to cut through it and get us our correct answer. All right. Uh, the next app we're going to talk about is the function app, and it, it, it does something that is very important, but it's also very different from what the solver app does. So what we're going to do is now that we're in our main menu, we can go to apps and then click on this function right here. So um, what the function allows you to do is basically you can graph any kind of um, equation that you want to on a XY plane. 
So what, um, what does this mean? Let's give ourselves an example. So how about y equals 2x plus 3, right? Now normally we can just kind of draw a little sketch of it, and I know it's going to go something like that, right? But let's say we want an exact value. Let's say we want to know where exactly it crosses the x-axis at that point. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our calculator, and we're going to type in this equation. But the good thing is, is that we can just completely uh, ignore this y equals part right here. Because this f1 of x equals, it takes care of it. That's, the, that's basically it saying y equals for you. So all we have to do is 2 times x plus 3. And it's also important to note that this 2 times x, you have to have a times in there. Sometimes if you don't, the calculator gets a little uh, wonky and it doesn't really allow you to um, do the correct multiplication. So it's always good to put a two times x if there's ever a need. So what we're gonna do is hit enter, and then we're gonna go to plot. So there you can see it is the same kind of line. So we know that our estimation was correct, but now let's get the exact value. So we know that um, it's somewhere in between like negative one and negative two but we need to get that exact value. So we're gonna hit this menu button and it opens up this whole array. And uh, the most important buttons on this are probably zoom, where you can zoom in and even kind of auto scale to where you think the thing should be. And also function, where you can do a bunch of different kind of functions, including the root, the signed area, the slope, and the extremum. Um, we'll get to those in a little bit, but on this one, we're going to want to find the root, right? So we're going to go to function and then 4 for root. So then there is our root at negative 1.5. So if we were looking for the root, right, our answer for this one would be negative 1.50. And that would be our answer. Something else that you can do with the uh, function calculator is calculate the um, point of intersection in between two different um, two different lines, right? Let's say we have a um, cur uh, curved parabola that goes in between this line right here, like that. I'll say that that is um, y equals x squared plus 1, right? So what we want to do is go down to our second line and type in x squared plus 1, all right? And hit OK or Enter, and then we can go to our plot and check it out. So as we can see, uh, this graph actually passes, um, it actually crosses through the line at two points, one over here and one over here, but specifically I'm talking about this one, right? So what I want to do is get this cursor over near where that intersection is, and then go to menu, and then function, and then five for intersection. Now we have two options here. We're going to choose this second one because we're specifically talking about the red line. We're not talking about this x-axis, we're talking about the F2, right? So we're going to click on that, and then it gives us our intersection at exactly negative 0.732. And then our x value for that would be negative 0.732. And if it asks for the y value, that y value is also right there at 1.54. So there you go. You can now find the intersection. And if we wanted to find the intersection up here, all you would have to do is just go to intersection and then hit it, and then there's your answer as well. All right, so we've covered the solver, we've covered the function. Now to go over the last thing that I think is very important for the HP Prime, something that makes it super important to um, getting a good score on the test. The last thing is the programs. So the cool thing about the HP Prime is that it allows you to uh, write and implement your own programs, right? So the thing is, is you can find all of these different programs under this toolbox button, all right? And so when you press this button, um, all these different files come up. And for me, the uh, primary one that comes up is the user file. But there is a lot of different files on this. So the user file is actually going to be um, probably blank for you because if you don't have any, if you haven't written any programs, you're not going to have any programs in here. These are all different programs that I've written. And inside of these programs, there's sometimes a bunch of little programs inside of them. Um, I'm considering uh, making a separate video just about writing programs and making all of these kinds of different stuff. But um, for now, this is, uh, is going to probably be blank for you. 
the, however, there are ones that are built in, and all these other files have uh, built in programs. So this is your math. Um, it doesn't exactly get used that often, but there is a, a bunch of in interesting and informational things in here. So if you're going to work with matrices, you might want to need something in here. But um, really, I don't use this one too much. And same thing for CAS. I'd say apart from user, the one that I use the most is probably uh, Catalog. Now, Catalog has a ton of uh, programs that are already built in. I'd say um, at this point, the most important program uh, listed on the catalog is probably the uh, convert program. So uh, in order to get to it, I'm going to, uh, as you can see, I'm already in caps lock. So I'm just going to type in uh, convert because that's the program we're going to look for, convert. So C-O-N-V. And don't worry if you can't find those letters fast enough. I've been doing it for a while, so don't worry about that. So as you can see, we've got the convert button and we'll hit enter. And so now we have the convert program here. Now the way programs work is that everything that the program does is going to be inside of these parentheses. So for the whole time, you want to keep all your stuff inside these parentheses. So um, in this case, uh, what the convert allows you to do is you can convert anything into anything else. Um, what this means is like if I had miles and I wanted to convert into centimeters, I could. However, you can't convert uh, two different units that aren't compatible. Like I can't convert units into, sorry, I can't convert uh, seconds into um, feet, right? Because it just doesn't work. They're, those aren't compatible units. So anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is, um, let's say we want to convert uh, fifth, sorry. Uh, one second. 15 um, miles into uh, centimeters, right? And sometimes they'll just ask you to do this, right? But sometimes you need to do this in order to get another part of your uh, question done, right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna type in uh, your first part. So you're gonna type in 15 um, miles, right? So what you're gonna wanna do is go to blue shift and then go up here to units, right? There's units and so you're gonna click on that and now you've pulled up all your different units. So in this case, we want a unit of length, right? So we're going to go here and we're going to scroll down until we hit miles for US. In this case, we always want to use US miles because if you can't tell, we are in the United States. So we're using this one and then I'll comma one. And now it's always going to be comma one, by the way, every single time. So what we're going to do next is we're going to enter in the value that we are going to change this into so we're going to use centimeters to change it into so we're going to do shift units and go down to oh sorry go just straight to length right and centimeters so we have what we started in we have what we're going to and so now we can hit enter so that gets us roughly 2.41 million centimeters so if that was just my question my answer would be 2.41 times 10 to the sixth power right so that would be your answer. All right, I'll do one more of these just because they're pretty fun. Um, let's say I want to convert um, 95 inches. Nah, we've already done a length. Let's do um, 95 degrees Celsius and convert that to degrees Fahrenheit. Let's see how this works. So we'll go to our toolbox and we're already on convert. So we'll just click convert. And now we type in 95 and then units, scroll down to temperature, right? And click Celsius, now comma one, and go to units, scroll all the way down, go to Fahrenheit, right? So we've got where we started, we got where we're going, so now we're ready to hit enter. And our answer is 203 Fahrenheit. So in this case, our answer would be 203. All right, guys, uh, that's kind of all the big stuff I had, but um, there is a couple other little small things that I want to cover. Um, you should probably know what all these different buttons do, right? Like this one makes something positive or negative. This one takes something to the somethingth power and so on and so forth, right? Uh, something else uh, you should think about is try to utilize your time because the faster you can go, then the more questions you can do and hopefully the higher you can score, right? 
So uh, something else that will save you a little bit of time is um, normally on the in the middle school uh, portions, you try to put everything in scientific notation, right? So like if you had the number 123, right, you would put that in 1.23 times 10 to the second power. However, in high school, it is um, a lot about time, right? And you want to be able to go faster. So I would say um, if you have the choice to write one of these two, I would probably just write 123, right? Because it it takes a couple of seconds to write 1.23 times 10 to the 2, right? But in actuality, they're just saying the same thing. Um, what I try to go to is like um, if the decimal, if this, sorry, if this number right here is smaller than negative 3 or greater than uh, to the fifth power, um, I will put the, I will put it in scientific, but otherwise I'll just put it in this form right here. So like in this case, uh, I don't know, uh, 8.97 times 10 to the negative three, I would just put 0.00897. And on the flip side of that, I'll just erase all this real quick. On the flip side of that, if I do 5.12 times 10 to the five, I would say 512,000, right? Anything past that, it's just a lot of it's a lot of digits regardless. So it might be a little quicker to just stick with that above. Like if I had to write like 4.86 times 10 to the 29th power, that that'd be a lot of zeros, right? That'd be like 27 zeros. I don't really want to do that, and that's just slower. So in that case, I would just stick to this. All right, guys, um, that's all I have. Uh, as always, uh, leave a like. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. If you have any uh, ad advice for me, if you want some more advice, um, just email me if you have any ideas. And I will see you guys in the next video.